Welcome to the Tech Connect warehouse, where today we're going to look at one of our favorite UPSs and give you a quick review of what to expect from the Toshiba 1600 XPI. Um, as you can see, first, there's a large touch screen. We don't have this powered on just because it can get loud, but I wanted to give you an overview and then we'll show you what it looks like plugged in. Um, as I mentioned, a large touch screen, there's a couple lights down here, LEDs that will tell you if everything is going on. They'll light up amber if there is an issue, but usually these are green. If you open up, there's not much to open up on the front end, except right here, this is your battery cabinet. So it's nice for a service provider that is easy accessible. You can pack it in with other stuff, but the batteries can be easily taken out right here. So this is just a metal plate, but once removed, you have three battery modules. All three of them make up one string. So you need all three of them to operate effectively. However, they are hot swappable. So you can take them out and test batteries or plug them back in with, without any interruption, which is a nice feature. So I've rotated the, the machine around so you can see the back side of it. Um, I wanna walk through all these components so you know what you're looking at. So right here is your network card. This is the remote i4 network card that Toshiba produces. It can handle a bunch of different protocols like HTTP, Modbus, SNMP. And so this first slot is where you would plug in your network card and connect it to your network. This other input right here is solely for like a temperature sensor if you want that. So it's not used that frequently. Over here, you have some other remote contacts. So you can hook that up to send a signal for an external bypass or some switch or anything specific to your facility. Underneath, this is a little contact where a service provider can plug in and connect to the firmware if they need to do firmware updates or download any logs. Of course, here's all your specifications and, and information about the unit. Down here, there's a single fan with a, a guard over it. One great thing is these bolts do remove and you can get in and, and replace that that fan, which are easily um, accessible and and readily available. This right here usually has a cap over here, but we took the plate off to show where you can plug in some external battery cabinets if you would like to. One good thing about this is you can daisy chain got three or four of them together. So you could get hours and hours of runtime by, by buying additional cabinets to plug into. This cover right here is a plate that for an, an additional option, you can remove it and have some 120 plugs coming in here or even 208, I believe. So if you want that option to have some hardwired inputs, you can. Down here is your main breaker and right here is your terminal block. So all of these Toshibas need to be hardwired for the input. There is no plug for the input. However, you can have some output plug your receptacles right here if you choose. This terminal block is where, of course, your electrician will wire the input and output. One thing to point out that we have seen is you need to be very careful down here on the jumpers. So there's a diagram and a label of how this should be configured depending if you are going to wire a 208, 240 system. And depending on how you want to configure it, this little jumper right here needs to go in a different slot. So we have seen customers and electricians change that, thinking it what didn't come correctly, end up torching a, a coil. So you have to be very careful not to change that because these will come pre-configured. And if you do change that, just make sure, triple check that it matches the diagram how you want it. Okay, so we've popped off the top to show you some of the internal components of this unit. Up front, you have the uh, main control board. Here is just another power board. And then back here, you have a couple of relays, fuses. Here's some AC capacitors. One thing we love about this is everything is built in components. And so you can remove and replace a control board or anything else without too much disruption. Most other units are built pretty much as one complete unit, one board. And so if any one component fails, you're really forced to just to discard the whole thing and buy a new one. But Toshiba does a good job of making these, building them in individual components so that one thing can be replaced. So right here, if you open this one up, this power board, this goes down to IGBTs and some DC capacitors. Like I said, we occasionally have had to change out a control board. Even the display can be removed pretty easily um, with some bolts here. 
So we really like the way these are designed just because you can get into it. It's very accessible and things are, are easily interchanged. I've pulled out a battery module. I want to show you a little bit about these. So this is just a, a very hard plastic container. They're pretty robust, but it is plastic. And so you can open it up with a series of bolts on the top, but keep in mind, they are prone to strip. So don't over tighten them. Make sure that your equipment isn't torqued too tight. These little tabs, like I said, will slide in and out on the system. If you look here, there's a sticker with two up directions. So there are a couple different configurations you can do with these. On the small unit like that 5 kVA one that I was showing you, they all go in horizontally like this. But on the bigger units, they are orientated uh, vertically. And so it just depends on what type of configuration you have. The nice thing is they're pretty interchangeable from one unit to another. So if you're a service provider and you have several of these out, you can keep some extra warnings and swap them into any 1600 that you have. When you open it up, you'll have six of these 12 volt, nine amp hour batteries aligned up and then connected with jumpers. Obviously we just have one here right now for display purposes. Back here you have a fuse that can occasionally go out and then this is your main contactor for the bus bar on the back of the unit. Um, keep in mind these are plastic, so you just have to be a little bit gentle that they don't get caught, that they're going in smoothly. Another thing to keep in mind if you are doing a battery change is these contactors can rotate. They're not fixed in here. So just make sure that it not to mess with that and it stays in the same orientation or your little prawns right here will be backwards. So that's the unit. I One thing that makes it a little difficult is because I showed you the, the orientation difference and that there's bolts here, there's also bolts on the bottom. You have to get both sides of these little screws out uh, before you can open the battery case. And when you're dealing with, with some heavy batteries, it can be a little cumbersome, especially you may not know exactly which side is up or down. So that's a design that isn't my favorite, but it's just a feature of these 1600s. So to summarize, this 1600 is a great unit. Um, it's very robust, very reliable. As you can notice, it's not rack mountable. And I think part of that design is to suggest uh, its end user, which is a lot of mines. We've seen these in mobile hospital trailers, uh, just very dirty industrial situations. And it's very enclosed and and just a robust, great machine. Um, it's also very, you know, very versatile. And the installation, there's a bunch of different configurations that you can that you can use for this. Um, I mentioned it is expandable, so you can hook on various other um, battery cabinets for longer longer run life. The battery modules are hot swappable, and so it's very easy to change out a battery if you get an alarm and need to do that. Um, another part of the design that I like, this is bolted on, but it has caster wheels, so it can easily move around and it, it makes it versatile to, to move around your shop or wherever you need it. Uh, I also love this large touchscreen. It's probably one of the largest touchscreens that we've seen in the industry on a unit this size, and it makes it very easy to, to see and to monitor and to, and to punch around to get to where you need to be. Um, one of our favorite things about Toshiba's, and it's not just unique to this model, is they offer a three-year warranty. And to me, that signals their quality and their robustness. A lot of the other competitors are one to two-year um, warranties. And so that says a lot for, for these Japanese manufacturers. Um, the lifespan on this, you should, be, you should get about 10 to 15 years out of it. So quite a bit longer than your typical, than your typical UPS. Um, in terms of cons, some things that I don't love about it is the, the menu isn't super intuitive. There are hundreds of, of different statistics that you can pull out of this and they may be necessary for your service provider, but as the end user you can get a little cumbersome, you only, you, you know, you really only need a few specific factors, but this really will tell you a lot of information. Um, probably the biggest con to this unit is the cost. These are a premium product and so the cost is going to be two to three times likely what your competitor or what its competitor would cost. But in terms of the, the lifetime value of the unit and the, the robustness, the, the lifetime value probably is pretty close, if not 
um, in favor of the Toshiba. Um, a downside is it's not rack mounted. We've talked about that, which is not a not a huge downside. But if you can imagine, you know, it's going to take up that much space in your rack where you could put in maybe some smaller servers. So it's not designed to go in that necessarily. Um, another con, which is fairly typical for most units of this size, is just the compactness of all the batteries. So we can get pretty toasty in there with all those batteries jammed and there's just not a lot of airflow going through. But, you know, all in all, we really like these units. This is gonna go into a um, agitation application tomorrow we're going to install it and so we'll show you a, a picture of the end result and uh we're excited that the customer is going to have this reliability going forward hey this is a follow-up video on the toshiba 1600 xpi series ups uh, we've got this installed at the customer site now and shown you a little bit of the display and seeing it run so this is the main display you can see the lights indicating that it's on online um, run and stop operations to turn it to bypass and from bypass uh, then up at the top well going around the outside here you have the status saying online this will change to bypass if needed up here's your current this will give you an idea of the runtime there's no load on this at the moment so you're not seeing anything and more information about machine and time in the menu and see if you click on each section of the UPS there's all kinds of data all kinds of data really more than you'll need but on this front screen this is showing you really the basics of what you need to know again down below we have our batteries and that's the Toshiba 1600 XPI well, let's transfer it to and from bypass real quick we're gonna press the stop and there we go bypass go back online Oh, I didn't do it long enough. You got to mean it. Press and hold. There we go. Online, online. That's the Toshiba 1600 XBI. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us and watching this video. Um, I'd love to hear from you if there's applications that you've seen on these machines, where you've seen them, the pros and cons. Let me know in the comments and we'd love to continue that dialogue. Thanks for watching.